Hi, Misha here, and a few things finally came in from Switzerland. In fact, we're essentially caught up now. We got the SG550 Reddit guns, we got the Alpine, we got the STGW07 Swiss Army editions, and we have the 552s. But this is one that's totally new. And it's not an SG550 type. This is a Vizen Defense WD9. It's an AR style gun in 9mm. And actually, yes, sar no sarcasm, it feeds from clock mags. So I've been really interested to get hands on these and see how they compare to other Swiss guns like the Brugger and Tomat and of course the San Sigs. And we'll discuss the history of this company. It's kind of interesting and very different. But before we get to this, I know we have to talk about this. The SIG PE-90P pistols are finally here. So let's spend a few minutes with these, and then we'll get to the WD-9. Real quick clarification for anyone who might not know. The base name of the series is SG-550, with the zero meaning full-length rifle gas system. This is what SIG has exported both select fire and semi-auto variants under. In Switzerland, the military refers to these as STGW 90 Stungewehr 1990. These are select fire with a four-way selector. Their semi-automatic civilian only versions are known as PE 90 and they have a serial that starts with PE. Now, over in Switzerland, neither the STGW-90 or the PE-90 have a name on the side. That's just not how they do it over there. Instead, they just have the Swiss crest, as this one does. <laughs> and they have the PE serial. But, of course, for export and, of course, for import in America, too, you need a name. And in the past, these have all come in under the SG550 name, 550SP, 550P, what have you. For the first time, there has been approval to import these with their correct semi-automatic name, PE90. And so that's how these are marked, imported by SAN Imports, JDI. They're built from all new serial matching parts, so your upper, which is your receiver, the gun part, your lower, which is a frame trigger housing, will match. The bolt and bolt carrier will also match. And one thing that I think is really neat is they didn't give these a special JDI serial range. They continued them on with the Swiss civilian PE range, including the numbers, meaning these are true PE-90s because they're in the same group. The only difference, they come with no buttstock here. They said they just have this alloy end plate. And that allows them to be legal. They accept standard magazines, 20 and 30 rounds. They come with the standard 20, which was what they issue with the rifle. You have the folding trigger guard. You have the pistol grip with storage compartment. You have the sling loop in the back. You have the classic Swiss diopter with removable iris. Have the uh, little SIG roundel on the back. And if you don't want to use diopters, these do take the QD mount. There's a dovetail here and a spot back here. We have the full length rifle gas, like I said, with the green handguard. 
we have this light bipod that can be removed from the handguard. And we have the front diopter with folding night sight, two-way stainless steel gas regulator. And then we have the 20.8 inch barrel. This has the grenade ring with the spring in it. And these do have the standard Swiss bayonet lug. Although if you want a NATO lug, they're just held in with a roll pin. Take it out. And uh, swap on one of the NATO lugs. Let's flip it over. This barrel is cold hammer forged, and it's the single piece variety, meaning the flash rider is part of the barrel. It's not permanent, it's literally part of it. And one interesting thing about these, the inside of the flash rider is threaded for a blank fire device. Some STGW90s, PE90s aren't, I don't think most are, but newer barrels this can be threaded. And that actually brings to an interesting point. These barrels were originally made by Hammerly, which now uh, Sand Sig owns again anyway. But um, they had some contractors. For example, uh, w, WF Burn made some barrels, as did Hammerly. But all final finishing, assembly, and testing were done by Sig. So it's really the same, but some people think it's kind of neat to have one of the Hammerly barrels. And uh, these were a few hundred leftover barrels that Sig needed to do something with. They were brand new, not used. On this side, we have the upswept caulking handle, which is what goes with the diopters. And then we have this rubber dust gasket back here. And then over here, you see the uh, pin that holds the end plate on. It also would hold the stock on. And since this barrel is over 16 inches, it's, there's not really a logistical problem. And by the way, it does have the stamped steel lower instead of the newer alloy. So this really is, you know, one for one identical to a PE90 over in Switzerland. And the same as their STGW, except for not having slight fire. It's worth pointing out that there were efforts to actually color the furniture in the older style green and even give it more of the green gray finish to the metal instead of the newer gray which came about in the 90s so more of an 80s look sig experimented with this for probably far too long in fact that was one of many reasons these were delayed it just it didn't work out they, they when they colored them they never could get the finish to look right and to be durable enough to suit them so that's okay. We have more of the gray green look that, like I said, came into use in the 1990s. Only 90 of these guns came in, the PE-90 ones, and all were pre-sold and sold out literally over a year ago. Uh, Pre-orders pre started to be taken right after Christmas of 2019, and all were spoken for not long after New Year's 2020. And so I'm shipping some out to people that pre-ordered. And this one will be going to Jay. He decided to uh, move his SIG 551A1 along. And pick up one of these to replace it. So I wanted to talk about the history of this a little bit. I've talked about my PE90 and 550s before. But our next video will be a little different. It'll be Jay at the range with this gun. And you'll get to hear what kind of accuracy and just generally speaking how he feels about it. So yeah, stay tuned for that. It could be quite interesting. And with that, let's talk about the Bison. Who is Vison or Vison Defense? Well, you've never heard of them. That's understandable. But they are quite possibly Switzerland's version of Wilson Combat, as I allude to in the title. And they have a really interesting story. Briefly, the original Wisson or Wyson company was founded by uh, Jakob Wyson in the 1926. 
and it was a logging company, a, a milling company for lumber, cutting lumber, chopping lumber. And then they would go from being a on-site to f founding a uh, fixed mill in uh, Rockenbach, which reminds me of Sherlock Holmes, of course, in Switzerland. And the whole idea that Jakob had was he wanted to find a way to make the whole lumber industry safer for the workers, more modern, more efficient, and more environmentally friendly. And in 1939, he had his big break. He developed and patented a new uh, cable crane system, a Skyline uh, cable, that made everything work better and more efficiently. So much so that in the 1940s, the company slowly transitioned from logging to just manufacturing these machines for other companies who wanted to buy them. And this gave them capital and ability to work on other projects. In the 70s, they really got into avalanche uh, control, protection, and prediction in a big way. And uh, established another company, Wisen uh, Avalanche Control, uh, spun off here. And this is where we start to see a few different companies under the name. And in 2000, uh, one of the members, uh, actually it was uh, Jacob's grandson, uh, Samuel, really went one step with this into the... Uh, the avalanche tower system, creating modern towers to help protect pretty much anyone around a mountain with snow, be it a, a mining camp, a logging camp, a uh, ski resort, what have you. And these became popular not just within Europe. Already the company had success in Switzerland, Austria, Norway, and a few other places with cold weather and trees. But they're starting to get success at this point in Canada, and even the USA and, and elsewhere. Well, moving forward, we kind of come to Vice and Defense. In 2013, this company was established. While Samuel would have an untimely, premature death, allowing Jakob Wise to take over Wizen. He was the, the basically the, the CEO. But another family member, Jorg Wizen, had always kind of been interested in firearms and in fact had dabbled in custom work, gunsmithing, and even a little bit of contracting for other manufacturers since the 1990s. I remember shooting is especially a big deal. And... Um, the, the Vizen company had a large manufacturing facility, at least by Swiss standards. It had CNC tooling. It even had its own R&D department. Not a very big company, but it was pretty much at the forefront of practical and industrial technology. Well, he kind of just partitioned part of this off and started making firearms. In the beginning, much like with Wilson, he was updating and modernizing Older guns like the K31 and the STGW57, or rather PE57, kind of giving them a modern twist. But then he got into AR-15s, doing the WD-15, which is a AR-15 assembled with Swiss quality and high-end kind of custom parts. From there, inspiration was taken from Brugger and Tomat with their TP9 series, APC9, all of those. But the one thing that um, Weizen didn't really like about the Brugger and Tomat guns, they took their own proprietary mags. Like many people, he wanted a gun that would take Glock mags. And so that was kind of the genesis behind the WD-9 was an AR style gun that would take a common magazine. So let's see what we have here. So it comes in this quite large, although short, case with uh, four snaps. You get the pistol itself. You have two 
high capacity Glock pattern mags with mag loader. You get a cleaning kit. Also some weights. I, I think there are weights in there in a little bag, I think, to adjust the uh, the buffer in the back some. And you get pretty large full manual. I think sometimes Switzerland's about the only country left doing manuals. <laughs> so, uh, presentation isn't bad. In fact, they even ship this case in a plastic bag to keep it from getting scratched, and that comes in a cardboard box. So, there's a bit of history, and there is a bit on what it comes with. Let's get into the meat and potatoes here. The Bison offers these in three basic models. The WD9 here. The WD9K with a shorter barrel. And the WD9SD, which is an integrally suppressed version that is actually rated for supersonic ammo. Pretty cool, but we can't import those. What we can import is the basic version here, or the K if we wanted to. And these just came over for the first time thanks to SAN Imports, JDI, out of Switzerland. So the first batch just made it over. And at first, it is another 9mm AR-style pistol. No bones about it. The barrel is actually very MP5. It is 8 and a quarter inches long. It is cold hammer forge with a chrome lime bore. It has a three lug adapter for devices. It is not threaded even over in Switzerland, although there's plenty of meat here if someone wanted to thread it half by 28 or something else, they could. Pretty standard alloy handguard and receiver, hard anodized. We have pick rail sections that are removable on the sides and it looks like the bottom too yeah it's a removable pick rail we have a QD slot here we have another QD on the end plate this has the Magpul grip if this were not a pistol in America it would also come with a Magpul foregrip and a Magpul CTR stock, but since this is a pistol, it just has this wrap for your cheek and no stock on it. Standard upper receiver. And like I said, it takes Glock mags. Flipping it over. Pretty much the same. I do note that the trigger guard is part of the lower, it's not hinged or removable. And there's not a port door because they probably felt like it was unnecessary. One more point of complication. I did note too that the front of the magwell is uh, patterned or has uh, ridges. It has an ambidextrous safety here, which is actually a 60 degree, not 90. We have ambidextrous bolt release. Let's see it over here. And we have a standard last round held open. And we have, I believe it's a Raptor, looks like a Raptor style. Uh, oversized charging handle, which is actually useful in this gun. Let me show you why, and then we'll crack it open. Because this is a blowback 9mm pistol, and because there's no stock on it, 
you have to get a really good grip to charge it because it's got a pretty stout spring on it. This is said to have a SCS buffer system. And then you just make sure to fully unlock it. The nice thing is it is pretty well sealed up. If you want to run it suppressed, I don't think you get a lot of gas in your face. But I could be wrong about that. Cracking it open, well, there's uh, no play to speak of between upper and lower. Very even finish on this. The pins are tight, but as you can see, I can pull it off with one hand. Let's see if I can get the front one out too. Yeah, I like it when they're tight, but not ridiculously so. Boop. So here is our inside. Our uh, trigger. It's a nice trigger for what it is. Very greasy. Interesting buffer system. There doesn't seem to be a, uh, a stop here. Just come forward. It'll be interesting to see how that works out. In practice, I don't want to mess with it too much right now. Plus, it's very greasy, which is not a bad thing either. It's for the receiver here. Another greasy part. <laughs> There's our bolt. Just as with most nine mil carbines, it's just one massive piece. First glance seems plenty robust. There's not a uh, gas port hole here in the upper, which is kind of nice since we don't really need a gas tube. It does seem to be pretty, at least internally, pretty much custom purpose built to be a 9mm, not frankly a half assed conversion from 223. I'm not saying anyone does it in particular. In fact, as you know, Jay and I love 9 mils. But some are better than others. I really like how this goes together and comes apart. Nice trigger. I like the uh, 60 degree throw safety as well. Mags lock in tight. And it does hold open on the Empty mag. It's right there. So it's not like one of those that has a manual only hole open. And of course, it stays open when the mag's out. Just let it go forward. Really has a nice smooth finish. Kind of a semi-gloss. The barrel's a little bit glossier. Uh, three lugs are always neat. The recommended site for these is, of course, an aim point. Those are very popular in Switzerland. And most of the accessories they recommend or ship them with and packages tend to be aim point related as well. Excuse me, aim point. Uh, Magpole related as well. But yeah, they've been producing these over there for a couple of years. Not only do they do them in semi-auto carbines over in Europe, they do have select fire versions. And I did check, and they have had some initial success with uh, police and uh, private security. Probably not military. There have been a couple of professional clients of Vizen Defense. Not bad for a company that's been around not quite eight years. And a gun that hasn't been out 
more than a couple. So that's the good news. What's the bad? It's Swiss, and that's always a double-edged sword. Often it does mean high quality, along with a high price tag. And a lot of it is the exchange rate right now, as well as wages in Europe and cost of material. You know, the uh, SG-55 guns are, well, yeah, various prices, but four grand, give or take. I compare this to the Wilson. You know, they have their AR-9. Those are about two grand. The Brugger and Tomac guns are more than that. And this honestly falls right in line. <clears throat> These are going to be over $2,000. I think full retail price is $2,600. But hopefully, if these are popular, it will come down a little from that. I don't expect it to ever go below 2 I'm not even sure how these will catch on because it's new. It is AR, but it's not AR. And that's that's kind of AR 9 mils in general. There's no standard. Not like what there is with 223556. But first impressions, the finish is very nice, the machining is nice, the parts are smooth. Ergos seem well done. And uh an eight and a quarter inch barrel is more than enough to properly stabilize nine millimeter. And Glock mags, of course, are available. So, the next step is, how does she do at the range? And we'll probably compare it with some other nine mils. Again, Jay and I like nine mil guns and have several carbines and pistols chambered for it. So, this was the kind of background and general overview of the features. Next time, when you see this gun, we'll be doing a at-the-range video and talking about how it shoots, how it feels. And if it has any jams or anything, we'll definitely talk about that, too. Because sometimes price doesn't automatically equal uh, reliability. It, it should, but it doesn't always. So, withholding full and final judgment until we can run a few hundred rounds through it at the range. Hey, at the current ammo prices, we'll probably blow through about as much money in ammo shooting this as the gun is actually costing in the first place. As sad as that is. So what do you think? Is this uh, something that would all interest you? Or pass on this one? Not really sure myself. But there's nothing that turns me off. But, on the other hand, I'm a, typically a military, sometimes police, firearms collector. This is certainly not military, and it's only lightly police at this point. On the other hand, I am also a Swiss collector. So, next one. There is that to be said for it. And we don't know how much longer we will be seeing imports. So, yeah, as we've said many times, the imports kind of get a bump to the top of the list. With that, I'll let you go. Appreciate you hanging out and talking Swiss guns again with me today. If any questions or opinions or comments on this, please do post them. As always, if you'd like to help support us, please uh, check out the link to our Patreon page. If you donate five dollars, we can maybe afford two rounds of nine millimeter for this. Yay! <laughs> this is Misha, and Jay and I both will catch you very soon at the range next time.